What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's give you a quick recap of the game between the Clippers and the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors have had their way with the Clippers for the past five years, but the Clippers always knew in the, their heart of hearts that they were the better team, they felt. And the difference in the past two years has only been Kevin Durant. Now, Golden State is under man without the, with them missing Klay Thompson, which would definitely put another, you know, gear into the team. I had them winning 47 games in the year, say 47, 48, being the eighth seed in the playoffs. A lot of people was, hey, you, how dare you? You gave up on them. How could you give up on the Warriors like that? I'm not, I'm assessing them as a team. They have a, a whole new bench. They have a lot of situations where a lot of guys are new to the system. And it's just going to take some time to get everybody, you know, on board with what's happening. And I, I feel like it's a it's a largely different experience than what people are imagining what's going to happen. Now, breaking the game down, <laughs> uh, Patrick Beverly is just one of the greatest, I would say, old school, new era basketball player. He takes everything seriously. He takes a certain pride of playing basketball, and he sets a tone. After watching him play, I was like, wow. Unbelievable. After watching him play that game on Steph Curry, and staying with Steph, irritating him, making it really difficult for him to even think about functioning. It set a tone. And I saw Golden State get out Golden State last night. And it was incredible because I'm not used to seeing a Golden State Warriors team Make these many errors. Draymond did get hurt in the first quarter, but it was more than that. It wasn't about Draymond being injured and things of that nature. It was more of the fact that... It was more the fact that they were getting beat up physically on the inside. It would be an out physically matched up. Teams were switching from left to right and shifting when it came to defense. On the ball defense from the Golden State Warriors was non-existent. Off the ball defense was non-existent. And guys were getting open shots from the Clippers and you definitely don't want that. The Clippers have proven by scoring 144 points in regulation against the Golden State Warriors that they're not just a defensive team. They could also score, and they could put up a lot of points. And this is without Paul George. I keep telling you I am not somebody that's sold on Paul George. I mean, his defense, yes, but the team is fine without him. See, that's the thing about – this Clipper team and having a bench and all having this type of talent and the guys that they picked up with Harkless and Green. When you got Harkless and Green out there, those two are very, very good components to have in a situation like this. They're only going to get about five shots, six, seven shots, you know, a piece in a game, but they make them count. You got to respect them. You leave Green open for three, he might go three for four. You know, that's a guy, plus he's live on defense. He can pick up on the switches. And defensively, they were in sync. 
And Kyrie was, I mean, Kyrie, Kawhi was just a master at directing. He directed the flow of the offense. He directed the pace. And when you put Lou Williams in there and they're playing together, both of those guys know how to control the pace of the game. Kawhi's like, give me the ball when we need it. But he was more dangerous with the passing in this game than being an offensive weapon because he didn't have to be. He was finding the guys that were open. They were making the extra pass. They were going uh, one, four, <laughs> and, then, and then out to the weak side. I'm like, okay, going one, then they go to the four, they go to the weak side. And they they see the weak side have, you know, guys are wide open. The defense collapsed. Guys are not really adjusted. And Chris, you know, he's used to being in Phoenix where the defense was just something the other team did. And he, he they got to get a lot better if they want to even make the eighth seed. So... I mean, a lot of people can make assessments out the one game, but let's let Draymond tell you. I'm not a ball victory type of guy. I'm not leaving this game looking for something to build off on. We fucking sucked. And we got to get better. I'm not a ball victory type of guy. I'm not leaving this game looking for something to build off on. We fucking sucked. And we got to get better. And that says it all. Nothing else breaks down the game more than that statement right there. Well, I mean, people can't say, oh, man, when are we getting the Clay Thompson back? When are we getting Clay Thompson back? You can't think like that. Dre hurt his arm. He came back and played, and he played with with hard, but he was injured. I'm not. I'm not even gonna think. Uh, well, D'Angelo. See, here's the thing. D'Angelo is not used to playing defense either. And definitely, um, you know, this is not something they do. He's a he's a run-shoot guy. And as you can see, he's not somebody that's going to rack up a lot of assists unless he can make the extra pass. They got him because he could score. But they need more than scoring. You got to play defense. You got to be able to pick up the guys off the ball. You got to be able to make these switches. There were so many, I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen players was wide open off the extra pass. Kawhi was dropping the passes off perfectly. It's just simple basketball, and they kept it really, really simple. Well, they had some flashes. I mean, they were making a run for it. But when you got uh, people who were not in rhythm, they were throwing everything at, like Steph Curry and everything, you know. Well, when people lose guys, you know, it's it's... It's essential because 
on defense, when you see guys get lost in the shuffle, uh, guys can get lost on the baseline, and people can get disguised and confused and switches. The Clippers are not a perfect team. They just know how to correct whatever they're doing wrong really fast. And they can score. They can put the ball in the basket. Basket, And the fact is that they don't neglect a player on the court. Meaning that guys like Shoebox, they work with Shoebox. I like the fact that they work with Shoebox. Each guy is committed. Now, Shaman at times, defensively, you know, he's an X factor. But when you have a coach like Doc, with Doc, Doc can snatch him in, snatch him out. And see, those, that type of coaching is not, it's not normally uh, done now. Now people are coaching like substitute teachers. Like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. It's like, come on, are you serious? Well, I, I'm, I'm just managing minutes, you know, and you don't want those type of coaches. You know, now we're going to see what Steve Kerr can do as far as coaching. But definitely, you don't want those type of coaches in there. The, the I just want to get through the game, coach. <laughs> I just trying to get through the game. I'm just here to navigate. <laughs> you don't want those coaches on your side. Lou Williams has been able to get any shot he wanted in the past two games. A lot of people are going to say, well, the Lakers played better than Golden State. So give the Lakers some credit when they played the Clippers. Well, the Lakers are a team that's predicted by some to win the NBA championship. So, what are you talking about? <laughs> no one is predicting. No one is predicting that the uh, Golden State Warriors are going to the NBA championship this year. No one. So, when you see that being said, I don't see why the Lakers fans are like, yeah. Yeah, we did a better job. I mean, it's... It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous to me. So, a loss is a loss. The game's over. They, they're not thinking about what they did to the Lakers two nights ago. And that's the focus. They're just another... A spot on the date that we got to play a game. When it's time to play the Lakers again, that's when they'll think about the Lakers. The Lakers, well, they got to worry about the Utah Jazz. Well, Yeah, 141 to 122 is an embarrassment. Now, let's talk about Giannis. A 30-point triple-double. The first time in NBA history someone has opened the season up with a triple-double. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks, mm, well, I think the Bucks have uh, proven a couple of things. I think they've proven that no matter who gets the commercials, no matter who gets the uh, the hype, the publicity, they know how to get the win. They're the better basketball team. Now, a lot of people have put Philly ahead of them to go to the NBA Finals 
when Philly's a team that didn't get out the second round of the playoffs. That's the closest they've been, second round. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks was the number the number one team in the NBA last year. The probably the only team I think that won what sixty games, and they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals in dominant fashion by the Toronto Raptors. Now, with that being said, the Milwaukee Bucks are still a great team and they added pieces to their unit. Now, the Houston Rockets, what you're looking at there is a team that is basically the same. And when you start thinking about, well, what are the Rockets bringing to the table? You know, like, that's, they're the same to me. And when you look at the Houston Rockets, and they just got more scoring at the point guard position with Russ. But they're playing the same way. And I saw that in preseason. I said, man, this is the same. They're, they're, they haven't changed anything. They just got out. That just lets me know that the decision was basically, the majority of it was attitude in the locker room. They just wanted, they just wanted uh, Chris Paul's attitude off the team and out of the locker room. Because they play it the exact same way. Both of them had poor shooting nights. And this is what happened. They were up 15 points and collapsed. Just like the Rockets normally do. James Harden disappears in the fourth quarter. But he was disappearing all game. He was just shy. And then you have a situation in which uh, you know uh, Russell Westbrook. He's shining. He's playing the same way. He's getting rebounds. He's bringing the ball up. It kind of threw James's game off just a little bit. When James got a rebound, he would go ahead and push the ball up and bring it into his shot. You know, he, he had a rhythm in how he played the game. It's kind of disrupted when your point guard is getting the rebound and Russ likes bringing the ball up. And when he gives it to James, James is not in his normal pattern. And, you know, he has to shift his offense to the, being the two, the two guard. But he likes to dribble into his shot sometimes, too, and get rhythm in doing so. And they tried to, you know, find a mix in there. And I, I think they'll, they'll find it. it. It's not like they're broken, but the style of play is like the same. And it's just so weird because these two are, have, you know, it, it, to me, Gordon was the one that really was the X factor. They... They could not step up in the clutch when, you know, it was like, okay, who's going to take it over? Russ and James Harden, he didn't have it that night, which he didn't. He didn't have it that night. And the only person there that could have done anything and could have made something better or made something worse, that only person that could have done that was Gordon. He's got to be the third guy. He's the, he was the, um, 
six man of the year last time. Now, he, you know, before he was starting, he was up for six man. You know, these guys are needed. You know, Truck Tucker, he, these guys are essential in the growth process of the Houston Rockets. And when one person can't, When one person can't perform, the other the other person has to definitely step up to the plate and answer the call. And they didn't have that. If James can't perform well, the Rockets can't win. And that's not, you can't win an NBA championship like that. You got to have components that you could trust out there that could step up when things go bad because that's how they lost every year. James can't perform in the fourth quarter, the team loses. James can't perform in the fourth quarter, the team loses. And it's been a growing it's been it's been that. And that's how they collapsed. James couldn't hit a shot. No one else stood stood up and said, okay, we got to take this game over. Gordon couldn't hit a shot. They played in a panicking mode, and they imploded. So it's only one game, but what you're seeing is the sameness of the same flaws that they had last year, that that hasn't been improved. And that's the sad part about that. You look at the Milwaukee Bucks, what they do. They stepped up. They knew when they get down, they're not discouraged. They keep playing. They play hard. They play tough. And Giannis has shown you he can shoot the long range. Everybody loves that. He got to get a shot, a consistent shot. Giannis is scoring points. And you ain't stopping him. So, I mean... The man was hitting threes, he was hitting jumpers, he was getting rebounds, he was blocking shots. He was everywhere. He, What more would you want from an NBA player? A most valuable player stepped up, down 15 points, lead his team to a comeback and victory and get a 30-point triple-double on opening night and people talk about what he needs to do. <laughs> Where do they do that at? <laughs> so, I enjoy talking basketball with you guys. I have a lot of fun talking about um, all of these sports and entertainment with you guys. So, you know, it gives me a great pleasure and honor to do so. So, I hope you guys definitely support the page by hitting the Cash App up. Y'all know my cash app is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. Or you could click the link in the description box at that Streamlab up. Don't forget to do that. <laughs> uh, the Detroit Pistons, man, are losing to the Atlanta Hawks. I told you guys to watch out for the Atlanta Hawks this year. The Atlanta Hawks is going to win some games and some beat a lot of teams that and surprise some people. Not saying that the Detroit win victory was a surprise, but I'm saying that they're going to surprise a lot of people this season. And that's the way I just see it playing out. As I was watching them, I saw the performance of a lot of the guys that they had on the team, and they were, I mean, essentially just unbelievable. I'm watching guys perform and step up to the plate and do the things that other people said that they couldn't do. I'm watching them actually do out there on the court. And I'm like, man, that's incredible. These guys are really, you know, have excelled as far as their confidence level. They're closing out games. And Trey Young is the, the generator of it. They put it in his hands and they're telling their little small point guard, go out and be our head lead scorer. <laughs> and he is torching guys. And the first half of the, uh, last year, since the second half, he's been just destroying teams. 
I mean, just letting them have it. They was like, oh, Trey Young, this guy's too small. He can't make it. And he's made an adjustment after that all-star break. And he has been on fire. He's figured it out. And it just took him some time. I thought he was, when he was coming in there, I was like, oh, man, this guy probably should have stayed another year, you know. I don't think he's ready. It's going to take him about a year to get, you know, adjusted. It took him half of a season to get adjusted. And, man, oh, man. He's not Steph. He's his own player, but I never saw him scoring 38 points on Detroit. Detroit just got to get better. They got to they gotta know, guys got to know their roles. One, I would start Derrick Rose. Period. Rose is going to get you 20 plus, and I guess you need that for your second unit off the bench, but I think you need him on the floor to start right now. And then that would set the pace for everything else. But I think he really needs to get in there and start. Atlanta is playing like the Golden State Warriors. They just don't have a consistent scoring on the uh, wing. They don't. They don't really have that guy that they can trust to consistently score from the wing. But the style of play, the sets they're running. <clears throat> are very similar to Golden State. <clears throat> so. Sorry about that. I'm here choking to death. I would say 100%. Uh, Atlanta making the playoffs. They, I do see them making it. But there's going to be a lot of changes going on in this in this whole new league right now. I mean, this era of basketball has changed dramatically. You have a lot of people who are in some way, shape, or form just different, you know. The way they play the game, the way they move, the way they do everything is just... Just different. Ah, the Trailblazers. The Trailblazers uh, are who we thought they were, man. I mean, I see the Trailblazers being another team that goes to the second round of the playoffs, and then they're going home. Denver, to me, is more of a threat. You know, Denver's more of a threat to me. So, ah, uh, that's about it, fellas. <laughs> Surprise team of the West would probably be uh, the Timberwolves, maybe. Uh, well, the Atlanta Hawks, they, they played, I got, I already picked the Atlanta Hawks to be my surprise team for these. I would say the Timberwolves would probably be the surprise team of the West. I still don't know if they even make the playoffs, but definitely the surprise team of the West.
so far would be them. So, I mean, a lot of people written them off. Nobody thought they would do anything, so. Well, that's about it. So, we done 30 straight. So, YouTube Premiere, you are so welcome. Now, click one of these videos and definitely hit that picture of me if you... You know, you stayed this long, <laughs> and you could uh, subscribe. All right, I'm gone. Deuces.